very good day to you. And once again, it is just so good to be with you on this program. I hope you've got your coffee mug or your teacup charged up. You've switched off your cell phone. You've closed the door. You've settled down. I know there's one friend of mine watches this program in his bed. <laughs> I won't tell them who it is. Don't worry. He's getting red in the face. We, we, we try our best to make this a family program. You know why? Because we've got to get back to grassroots. The whole world is going mad. And people are throwing basic fundamentals out of the window. There's no more foundations. And uh, the whole objective of this program is to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, not to be ashamed of the gospel, to preach everything that's in this word, and that's the truth, nothing more and nothing less. I know some of you write into me, and I appreciate it, by the way, and you tell me, Angus, you forgot to say this, or you didn't mention that, or that. That's fine. As I've said before, I don't mind your opinion as long as it's based on the Word of God. And as you also know, I'm very quick to say sorry if I got it wrong. But folks, I'm not interested in your opinion. You shouldn't be interested in my opinion. We're only interested in God's opinion, especially in this last day and age. You see, this Bible is a compass. This is a direction finder. This is the book that shows us the way. I'm speaking particularly to young people today. You need to go by this compass. If you don't, you are going to get lost. And some of us older people have taken our compass and we've put it in our back pocket because we think we know it all. We don't. You know, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing how little I know. So today I've got a special message for you. And it's getting right back to basics. And I'm, I've told you in a previous program, I'm reading a book by Thomas Akempis. He lived 500 years ago. He was a monk. He was a German by nationality, and he had a tremendous love for God. He lived to the age of 91 years old. He, he was in a monastery. Okay, Many of us can't um, afford that privilege to be able to just sit and spend time with God. But what he did do for you and for me is he wrote a book called The Imitation of Christ. It's the most translated book, only second to the Bible. Now, he spoke in one of his chapters about the subject of familiarity. And I want to expand on that. And I want to use it in the 21st century. Because it's what Jesus says that really counts, not even Thomas Akempis. I want to ask you to be careful that you don't become familiar with your peers, with your workmates, even in your own family. Jesus said, do not cast your pearls before swine, that's pigs, because they will trample it in the mud, come back and devour you into pieces. Now we're going to look at that. It's in the book of uh, Matthew and it's chapter 7 and it's verse 6. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. And Jesus said, do not give what is holy to the dogs. Do not give what is precious to you, young lady, young man. Don't share all over the neighborhood something that's very personal and precious to you. Nor cast your pearls, okay, that's a very precious, before swine. I think what the Lord is saying there is people that are maybe don't understand your predicament, your situation, maybe they are not, um, not even of the faith. Don't throw personal things to the pigs. You see, I, I'm, I'm guilty of this myself. That's why I'm sharing it with you. I don't want you to make the mistakes that I've made. You know, people say, I wear my heart on my sleeve. And maybe that's quite a good thing in some ways. In other words, what you see is what you get. Okay? I've got no hidden agendas. I would be a hopeless poker player. I've got my one son. He would be excellent. You never know <laughs> what's going through Andy's mind. He's deadpan. He's a lovely boy and he loves Jesus, but he gives away nothing. You know, you can have a volcano here and he'll say, gee, that was quite interesting. You know, he'll never die of a heart attack. <laughs> but me, I shout about everything, okay? But seriously, we need to be so careful who we share intimate things with, right? So Jesus says, do not cast your pearls before swine, before pigs, lest they trample them under their feet and Turn and tear you in pieces. Young girl, 
There's a young lady watching this program right now. You're a schoolgirl. You're in high school. You're coming towards the, ed the end of your education. The Lord's got a word for you today. Do not share with your friends personal things. Because what they'll do is they'll take them and they'll throw them to the wind. Everybody in the school will know about it. They'll trample it in the mud and they'll use that very information to come back and to stab you in the back. You understand what I'm saying? Don't do it. Uncle Angus, what do I do then? Take it to the Lord. That's what Jesus said. Jesus says he knew what was in the heart of a man. That's why he shared very little precious things with man. Even his disciples. And I mean they saints, literally. Jesus would always be found early in the morning up the mountain. What was he doing? He was sharing personal things with his father. And he was getting advice from his father. And he was listening to his father. And he was getting comfort from his father. And he was getting strengthened by his father. Some of us are putting too much pressure on our spouse. That's right, madam. You're putting too much pressure on your husband. You are asking your husband to be like God. He can't. He's a human being, just like you, just like me. And then when he doesn't come up to the mark, then you get disappointed in him. It's not his fault. He's just a person. Take that thing to the mountain. Take it to the Lord. Speak to God about it, and He will comfort you. Do not become familiar with people. There's a saying in the English language. It goes like this. Familiarity breeds contempt. That's quite right. You share everything with everybody, and you know what happens? Eventually, they, con they, they treat you with contempt. They lose respect for you, and uh, they, they just treat you like... Well, maybe like trash, eh? That's right, some of us. We need to really today to make a decision, and I'm going to pray with you at the end of this meeting to say, Lord, I am sorry that I've been opening my big mouth too much. I've been seeking comfort and counsel from people when I should be taking it to the Lord. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. Do not cast your pearls before swine. Don't share personal things. Because people will re lose respect for you. Now, I want to say something even more personal. I want to say to the young people watching this program, and I'm talking about people who have maybe left school and they are now working, and they've found somebody and they've fallen in love. And maybe you're sitting on the couch watching this program with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, maybe with your fiancé. You are not married yet. You must not allow yourselves to become familiar with each other. That's right. You say, come on, Uncle Angus, grow up, man. I'm telling you, folks, a lot of people I have to counsel are people who have come from broken relationships. Not even marriage I'm talking about. And the girl is heartbroken because she really thought that this man was going to marry her. And so what did she do? She became familiar with him and she allowed him to do things with her that should, should never have happened until the night of their wedding. That's as far as I'm going to go. And what happened straight after that? He left you. Is that right? Yes. Because you see, his heart was not in the right place. He wanted you for a certain reason, and when he got it, he called it a day. Don't do it. You know, I've shared a, a, a story on this program before, a true story. All our stories here are true. There's no fictitious stories about a lady that came to the farm to the Sunday service. And after the service, she came up to me, a beautiful young girl, and maybe she's watching this program. I'd say she's probably in her middle 20s then. Beautiful, black, curly hair, lovely complexion, beautiful eyes. And she said to me that she read one of our books, Hardcore Christianity, which I wrote many, many years ago. She had been in Europe with her boyfriend. They'd been touring Europe together, working around together, and they were living together. And they were living in the same flat together. And she said she read this book, and she realized that she was living in sin. She was actually coming back to South Africa the next month to get married. Her mother had already organized and father organized the wedding service and everything. They knew about the bridesmaids. They got the wedding dress, the venue. Everything had been paid for. 
And two weeks before the wedding, she read in the book about having uh, uh, a close uh, relationship before marriage. It's not on. It's unacceptable. She said to her fiancé, I want to honor God. And I want to repent that we've been living together out of wedlock. It's uh, actually called fornication, actually. And I want us to separate and we'll come together on the wedding night. Two weeks before they were going to get married. They'd been going out for about three years. You know what he said to her? That young man, that foolish young man said to her, if, if you move out of this flat, the wedding and the relationship is over. You know what she said to him? She said to him, probably tears running down her face, it's over. And she left. She had to come home, obviously, and tell her family that it's over. You can imagine the relatives were all organized. The weekend had been booked. It's over. And she came to me, and she was in tears. And she said, but you know, Uncle Angus, I feel free. And I said to her, young lady, I'm so proud of you, and Jesus is even more proud of you. And I want to tell you something. If that man could not have waited for two weeks to become intimate with you, then he didn't love you. And you did the right thing. Because if you hadn't called it off, that marriage would have never, ever gone the distance. And I said something else to her. I said, now that you've done this, the Lord Jesus Christ has seen your heart. And he will send the right man into your life. And hopefully I'm speaking to a lady that's married now. Maybe you found him. And if you have, write to me and tell me. The real man who loves you for who you are. Do not allow yourself to become familiar with a relationship before time. Don't do it. As soon as you do that, it destroys it. That's exactly what Thomas Akemper says. He says, you go to people and you open up your heart and then they see the wickedness in you because we're all wicked by the grace of God. And then that, that image gets destroyed and they don't want to speak to you anymore. I want to say to a man that's going into business, do not be foolish, sir. Do not become familiar with the company or the partnership that you're going into. Don't be too hasty. Because you know what will happen? You'll lose your business. Often, that man has got no intention of going into business with you. He wants what you know. And once he's got it, that knowledge, that expertise, he will leave you. Now, I can prove that. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 10. This is what the Lord says. Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 10. And, he, and this is what he says. Lest aliens, okay, foreigners, lest aliens be filled with your wealth, okay, and your labors go to the house of a foreigner. You know how many men have come to me weeping? They've shared something very intimate, uh, an invention, and they have failed to patent it. And they've shared their heart with a man, maybe even says he's a Christian. And they've told him the concept. That man went around the corner and he started up the very same business and sunk him. Or took his very own idea and absolutely squandered it. Do not prostitute yourself to others, folks, because you will come unstuck. They will lose respect for you and they'll take what you've got and they'll spit you out in pieces. So what are you saying to Angus? What are you saying to us? Are you saying to us that we mustn't be real with people? Of course not. Are you saying that we mustn't socialize? Of course not. What I am saying, sometimes you need to take a step back. See? Jesus, where were you? The disciples said. Lord, we've been looking for you all over the place. The people are waiting. I've been about my father's business. I've been to the mountain. I've sought counsel from my father. You need to spend more time in the closet. Spend more time with the Lord. He understands, folks. How does He speak to me, Angus? Through the Word of God, through meditation, through just sitting there. And that you see what my, um, my referee, my common de denominator is in my life? Peace. Ukutula, we say in Zulu. Freda, we say in uh, Afrikaans. Shalom, we say in Hebrew. Peace. It's the peace of God that gives me the ability to make decisions. 
And then I can come down from the mountain and I can say, this is what we're going to do. And they're going to say, who said so? And then you can say, God said so. Then they've got one of two choices. They can either agree with you or they can disagree with you. But they can't argue with you, folks. See? Now, young lady, if you say from today onwards, I'm not having any more physical relationship with my fiancé until we're married. That'll be a good tester. And if he loves you for who you are, he'll say, no problem. I love you anyway. That's a good sign. If he says, if you do that, I'm out of here, let him go. In fact, chase him out. He's got no desire to live the rest of his life on this earth with you alone. Same with business. You go into a, a partnership, and obviously you must be a Christian. Don't become unevenly yoked. Otherwise, you sunk before you start. You tell him, I've got my game plan. I'll share it with you when we sign on the dotted line. If he says, no ways, I'm not signing any dotted line until you tell me uh, your invention, whatever it might be. Call it off right there and then. And some of you are nodding as I'm talking because you've been there, haven't you? That's right, I have too. Taken to the cleaners because you trusted somebody. So you became familiar and you told him everything. And he walked away and he trampled it in the mud and he came back and he devoured you. Now, folks, this is very important. That's why I'm going to pray for you at the end of the program. We need, first of all, to ask God to forgive us for running around the countryside like prostitutes, getting advice from every Tom, Dick and Harry, telling everybody what we're going to do, and then wondering why there's no surprise afterwards. Everybody knows. I want to say to preachers, if there are some evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets watching this program, I want to tell you, be careful. There must be a space between you and the congregation. What do you mean, Angus? Don't go and open up everything that happens in your house to the congregation. You are asking for trouble. Number one, they will lose respect for you. Number two, your family will be in trouble. Don't keep on using your family for your illustrations. I'm talking about your children. I'm talking about your dear wife. You, you say, oh, no, but Angus, we've died to self. It's no longer I that live. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about opening the bedroom door and letting everybody in the congregation have a look inside. It's a no-no. If you want illustrations, go back to the book. Because your family becomes the talking topic of the high street. And again, the same thing happens. Eventually, they'll come back and they'll devour you. Don't share precious commodities, precious things with people. Take it to God. If you want advice, go to God. He'll give you the best advice. If you need to know what to do with your children with regard to discipline, if, uh, if it's a business decision that you need to take it to God. And God will direct you. And he might say to you, I want you to go to that businessman. He's one of my people. Go and share your heart with him. That's different. Okay? Sit down with your children. Tell them as well. Don't go and tell everybody what you're doing. What it does, it takes away any self-respect. And you become just kicked around the street. And you don't want that. You are a, a very special person. You are a creation by God. You need to guard your character and your personality. And you need to only share those things with the master. And he will see you complete the race. I've been married for a long time, friends, a long time. And I want to tell you, the longer I'm getting married, the more I realize how private and how special and how personal my relationship is with my wife. And there's things that my wife and I speak about that we don't even tell our own children. Why? Because... We don't we want to become familiar. And we don't want them to become familiar with us. I want to say one last thing before I pray for you. And this is very important. And maybe some of you won't like it. There's got to be a respect for age. I really have a problem when a five-year-old child comes and addresses me by my first name. <laughs> now I'm in trouble already. I can see it. Why, Angus? Is it because of, uh, you think you're something special? No. It's because I want that little boy, that little girl to grow up learning to respect authority. That's why I will not get my children around the table and speak to them as an equal. Because I'm their father. And they're my children. And that's how it should be. 
So when they have a real problem in life, they can come to dad and to mom and ask us some godly advice. If we're forever sharing everything we have, they've got no more respect for us, and they treat us as equals. And we are not equals, folks. There's some other people grimacing now. We're not equals. That's why the Bible talks about elders in the church. I want to tell you about an elder. An elder is an older person. That's what an elder is. If you've got an elder at 18 years old, I have a problem with that. What does he know? He's never been married. How can he counsel a divorced couple? You understand what I'm saying? So there's got to be a respect. And when we come back to the, the ethnic people of the world, I'm talking about the Maasai, I'm talking about the Scotsmen in the Highlands, you'll find that those people have got respect for their elders. They sit down and they listen to the elders. In Zulu we say, We respect older men. We take our hat off when we speak to older men. Why? It's a sign of respect. We don't walk up and hug him around the neck and wrestle with him on the grass. Why? Because that's familiarity. And that breeds contempt. And I'm speaking to the older men now. You need to act your age so that the young people can respect you. Amen? That's exactly right. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God will give us discernment. That we will know who it is we need to share our hearts with. Okay? We need to get alongside men and women of our own age group. Boys and girls of our own age group and be careful what we share. And then we're going to have a trouble-free life. Okay? Less trouble anyway. Then things are going to go well with us. We're not going to make so many mistakes. And then we're not going to have this hot and cold thing all the time. One day you're a big hero. The next day you're a bum. Okay? One day you're hot and one day you're cold. Why? Because you're not stable. Now, we're stable when we take things to the Lord, and He gives us His counsel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today, this is an awkward uh, subject, but I think it's so important because there's no peers in the world. There's no father figures. There's no mother figures because there's no respect because people are familiar with each other. Lord, when the disciples came to you, they knew that you were the Son of God. When you sat around that table at the Last Supper, you weren't just one of the boys. You were the Son of God. Lord, I love these people so much, and that's why I'm sharing my heart. I trust that the word that I've shared, Lord, will make a difference in their lives. They will start to be careful who they share intimate things with. And Lord, through that, they will gain respect and discernment, and most of all, a fear of God. Lord, let them go to the mountain when they need counsel and advice. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you until we meet again. Goodbye.